everybody, this is Adrian with Ascension Soul Coaching. Today we're going to do a reading on Rihanna. Rihanna just announced or just showed the whole world that she's pregnant. So um, not only is that girl one month pregnant, two months pregnant, three months pregnant, or four, she's about six months pregnant. So nobody knew. If you don't know, Rihanna's a big hip hop or R&B soul uh, singer. Well, I guess more R&B pop over here in America. Um, she's from Barbados. She's a beautiful girl. I've watched her grow from when she entered into the market in the entertainment business until now. I don't listen to all of her music. I used to when I was younger. I, I, I would listen to some of her music. Um, but you know, you kind of grow certain things. But now she's a you know, mega fashion uh, mogul. So she's got money. She doesn't, I don't think she's performed so much as she used to or if she performs at all anymore. I think what she does now is just run her fashion business. And, I, and she's really phenomenal at it. So she and her boyfriend, ASAP Rocky, um, he looks a little bit like uh, Kylie Jenner's boyfriend, uh, Travis Scott, with the hair about the same. Um, are expecting a baby. They've been together for a few years. Uh, everybody says he's a good guy. And he's like one of the top R uh, rappers uh, out in the industry right now. I don't, I've never, I probably have heard of his music, but I, I don't know him. But they've been together for a few years. She's in her 30s and this is her first baby. And how she announced it was, <laughs> she was walked to some, of course she had PR do this. She's walking, you know, she's got a clothing line. So she's got this jacket on. I'll show you a picture. Uh, and it's kind of slightly open. Her belly is decorated with the beads and everything. And I think she's going to have a girl. I don't know if it's going to be a girl, but I just feel girl all over it. So, um, and that's how they announced the baby. They just put the po photos out there. And so now everybody's like, especially the young African-American uh, girls and uh, people who like uh, rap and all that stuff. They're all excited about it because everybody likes Rihanna. She's just, she's never put up uh, that we know. Well, she had the issue with uh, Chris Brown about 15, 10, 15 years ago. I don't know, 10 years ago, something like that. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to move past that. But now she's with this nice guy and um, everybody says he's nice. And she's about to have a baby. And you know what's so refreshing about it is that she's she she she's really famous, right? She's she when you see her, you would say, oh "My God, this girl is beautiful. She's tall. She's slim. She's just beautiful." Um, so you would really know her if you if you knew who she was, you would know who she was, right? When you saw her on the street. But what she was doing was, you know, she worked up to a certain point. And then she was wearing big coats. So, you know, the wintertime here, nobody, and it's still winter, nobody would kind of like had anything, you know. But she was so thin. But so I think the past couple of weeks, people have been kind of, there's been rumblings about whether she was pregnant or not. But no one knew. And I didn't know about the rumblings until she, this announcement came out. And then everybody was like, oh, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, people were trying to say something, but they couldn't confirm it. Now it's confirmed. But what's really, really good about it is you can see the dichotomy between how she handled her birth announcements and how, you know, she's, she's dealing with her life. She's very well known, but she's not running and hiding from anybody. She's just, she just kept it down low. She just didn't talk about it. You know, she's not married to the, to, um, ASAP. So, you know, but I'm sure she has her reasons. I'm sure she, low stress. She's in her thirties. So it could be a, like a riskier baby. But the fact that she revealed her stomach, her belly to everybody, and you know, and she's not like Demi Moore who did a photo shoot on, put it on the on the on the um, magazine or this big announcement all over the world like Meghan and, and Harry did. She just had PR tape pictures and they just put them out there, and it was so beautiful, so low key, so pure. I feel like it was just so beautiful uh -huh. how how they did it and I, and I appreciated it so I want to do a reading on her and I want to know what kind of uh, real, how, what kind of mother she's going to be to her baby that's the only thing I'm going to do on her because I feel like sometimes she just do it right and you know Kylie Jenner is pregnant too again by Tavis Scott but this is her second baby their first baby Stormy but they they're they're doing the same thing kind of sort of they're like keeping it low-key she Kylie announced it but then she's not going around showing her belly or anything like that she's just keeping it low-key and she hasn't even told anybody that you know in the media her due date and I think once she has the baby once everything's done she's going to show the baby I just think the way they are doing it is just so much more private than it is scheming and manipulative it's just like I want to have this for us it's how it feels I want to 
the, I don't want to have stress and drama around being pregnant, you know, announcing it, and everybody want to take pictures of me. I'll just announce it, and I'll step back for a little bit and do what we do. And then when the baby's born and everything's healthy, then we'll announce it, and we'll show pictures of the baby, unlike some other people who shall rename, who remain nameless. So let's do a reading on Rihanna, because that's what this reading is about. So I'm going to use my fairy tale. tarot and I use the small cards because the real cards are very expensive and they're out of print let's do this reading so sometimes you'll see some writing on the back of these cards because it's all about fairy tales and there's fairy tales from all over the world so I can't remember all of them so I put my little cheat notes on the back but I don't look at the cards why I'm you know the backs of them while I'm shuffling so we're gonna say what kind of mother I'm gonna throw out one card what kind of mother is uh oh, all these cards coming out. What kind of mother is Rihanna gonna be? I don't, I'm starting to shuffle. I don't like to take out the first card, it just falls. Let me just make sure I get a good mix. If it's the right card, it'll come out again. So we just keep on shuffling this one card, please. What kind of mother will Rihanna be to this baby? What kind of mother? Will Rihanna be to this baby? Oops, so we're going to take that one that fell out first. Cool. And it is <laughs> the Golden Goose. You can see that. Now, the moral of the story for the Golden Goose is that greed leads to great loss. Let's talk about the story of the, so it's the six of coins. The six of coins is typically, you know, when, it, the pinnacles is about life and health and all that stuff, right? But it's, a you know, six of coins is more about having or not having and having the resources, the knowledge and power. And I think if I read this card for just intuitively, it's saying, I think, that she's going to have multiple children. This is not the first. But let's just read. What, do you, we all remember the story of the Golden Goose? Well, the Golden Goose was about a story of three brothers who lived on the hillside. And one of the brothers was sent into the hillside to go cut wood. And when he went, he found a little gray man there. And a little gray man asked him for food because the boy came with food. He came with enough food and cake to eat. And the, the little boy, the oldest boy who went first, said, no, he wasn't going to give him any. I wouldn't have any for myself if I gave you some. So then the second boy, so he, came, so he got hurt. The little gray man did something that made him get hurt. So he came home limping. And then he told the father what happened. The father then sent the second boy out to do the job. And he had food and he had drink. And when the little gray, gray man met him, he asked him for food to share with him. And he said the same thing his brother said. And then the gray man made, did something to make him get hurt. He went home limping. So then the third brother, who was the youngest and who was probably not the smartest in the story, said, I want to go. I'll do it. I'll get the wood cut. I'll go to the, go to the, to the forest. I'll cut the trees down. So the father's like, no, you don't. You, you, you wouldn't be able to handle this. And so the boy is like, I can do this, Dad. I can really do this. I really want to do this. So the father didn't want to really waste any food and drink on the boy going out to the woods. He didn't think it was going to last long anyway. So he gave him sour um, beer. I think it was beer they, would, they had given them back in the, that time. And cake that wasn't so great. And he says he won't be out there long. So he sent them. So the little boy gets out there and he meets the gray man and the gray man asks him for something to eat. And the little boy says, fine, sure, I'll, I'll share with you. So when he opened up, the, up the, the basket for food, the cake magically turned into a beautiful cake and the, the sour wine turned into crystal pure wine. And they ate together. And the little man, gray man told him whatever he wanted, he would help them just to come back and ask. So, but before he left, he gave him a goose. He gave him this beautiful goose and said, this will give you good luck. 
So the little boy took the, co took the goose with him and back to his home. But before he got to his home, he stopped by the village. And in the village, he went to a store and there were three sisters there. And the oldest sister came up to the goose and she wanted to touch it and she wanted to pluck its feathers. And so she pulled it, but when she pulled the feather, she got stuck. Then the second sister came up and she tried to do the same thing and she got stuck. So then the third sister had just didn't see the commotion. Uh, she walked up to the bird, the goose, and her two sisters were like, no, no, don't touch him, don't touch him. And she's like, why shouldn't I touch him? And if you can touch him, I can touch him. So she touched him and she got stuck to the goose. <laughs> They walk out of the store and in the parish, the priest comes up to them and says, oh, you girls, what are you doing running behind this this guy? Because everywhere he went, they had to go because the, they were stuck to the goose and he didn't notice they were stuck. He just thought they were just following. So he trying to get away from them and they just following him. So the, so the priest was like, what are you silly girls doing following him, running behind this young man? And he reaches out to, to pull the girls back and he gets stuck. So they start walking and, and together, again, the boy doesn't understand that everybody's stuck. But remember, he was not the brightest one and the three boys, the three brothers. He wasn't the brightest. He got, so he's not understanding that everybody stuck to the goose. <laughs> There's a princess in town and she's in her castle and she's really sad and depressed all the time. And her father, the king, had put out a decree that anybody who could make her laugh, he would let marry. So, her. So, what happened was when the little boy was walking, with the boy, the young man, I should say, was walking with the goose and the two the three sisters and the priest all stuck to him he's trying to get away from them they keep following him and then he falls and they fall and then they said that the princess saw it from her window and she laughed this roared out laughing so the, little, the young man found out that was the, that the story was that if anybody could make the princess laugh then he could marry her any man I'm sure and so he went to the king and says hey and when he heard the story he says hey I heard I made her laugh. I would like to marry her. And uh, the king says, no, mm -mm. no, you, you, you mm -mm. he knew the boy was poor. So he was like, no, mm -mm. you're not good enough. I tell you what, you go out into the world and you find somebody who can come back in my castle, drink all the wine that I have in my castle, you can marry her. So he left, but guess where he went? He went to go find that gray man. And he was like, great, you know, I need help. I need to find, I need to be able to drink enough wine in the king's castle or find some men that can do it. I just need to find them. So the great man says, fine, you know what? I'm going to help you out. You help me out, I'm going to help you out. So they were able to go back to the castle and drink up all the wine that the king, that was in the, that was in the castle. And the king, so then the, the young man went to the king again. And he said, okay, I drink up, we got all the wine, drink, we drink all the wine up in the, you know, your castle. Everything's gone. Everything's gone. Can I now marry your daughter? And he said, no. You know, I did. and he says, look, I did what you told me to do. He said, I'll tell you one more thing. The king says, you go and you find me a ship that can sail on land and on sea. You can marry my daughter. So he goes back to the gray, the young man goes back to the gray man and says, I have to find a ship. The, the, the gray man says, okay, okay, fine. I'm doing this because you helped me. So I'm going to help you. And he helped him find a ship that could sail on land and on sea. And the young man took it to the king, and the king couldn't say a thing. The king says, you know what? I'm going to help you. I'm going to let you marry my daughter. You've done everything I asked you to do. And I want you all to be happy. I want you to be so, so, so happy. And so he married this young, poor boy from the mountains was able to marry the princess. And when the king died, he helped rule the country with his queen. So how does that relate to the story with Miss Rihanna? Well, we know Rihanna's been through a couple of things in her life with like say Chris Brown, and I'm sure there's some other things in her, her background and her history that people may know, I don't know all about it. I didn't really study a lot about her background. But we do know Chris Brown was very abusive to her, the singer Chris Brown, American uh, soul R&B singer. And she's come out of that. She probably had to do a lot of things in the music industry to get to where she was. Struggle in the beginning. She's a beautiful girl, 
you know, people probably, uh, it's my opinion, allegedly probably took advantage of her, or probably tried to. And she rose to the top. She rose and she came up smelling like roses and she became a, you know, top charter. And she was part of the touring groups and she was um, um, on a huge record label, label with Beyonce's husband. So then she left from there. She did a little bit of acting and now she's a mogul fashion mogul with the clothing lines, makeup line, perfume line. She's doing great. <clears throat> so it's about, I think paying your dues is about being kind to people. It's about giving and not always taking. And I think that must be her personality. And I do believe the type of mother she's going to be is someone who's going to teach her child the values of hard work sacrifice, dedication, being generous and kind to people. And when you do those particular things, the kindness will come back to you. I do believe she'll have more than one child. The story is about three brothers and three sisters. I don't think she's going to have six, but I think she'll have more than one. And she'll probably have at least one of each. But when most people think of the goose they think of the golden eggs this wasn't a story about the goose who laid a golden egg it's just about the golden goose this beautiful golden goose that everybody wanted to touch and if you look at Rihanna now she's beautiful she glows she glowed before she got pregnant because there's something about her and y'all know Harry used to like and have a little crush on Rihanna. Thank God he didn't marry her. Because I think she's making the best she made she's making the best decision now with her life and how she's caring caring forward and how she's handling herself. Very and in our world, the black culture, we call everybody a queen if you act like a queen. You carry yourself like a queen. People follow you, people respect you. People lift you up. And I think right now, what I heard was that when they found out that Rihanna was pregnant, it almost broke the internet because that many people followed her. That's a type of, you can just feel that vibe around her. This girl is going to be a great mother to her children. She's got a very quiet demeanor. She seems very nurturing just from when you see her, you say, and you hear her talk and you hear her act. She's just got a, a real humble person. But she's worked her way up to the top. She paid her dues. She was kind to the right people. And she gave. You have to, to get what she got, she had to give a lot. And I think she's going to teach her child or her children the same thing. How to succeed in life. So that's the story of the golden Bruce, that's the Six of Coins, and that's our Miss Rihanna. I hope you like this reading. I try to help people just go a little deeper sometime on what the readings mean. Um, if you want a reading with me, you know how to get in contact with me at ascensionsoulcoaching at gmail.com. Talk about marriage, divorce, family, work, career, finances, dreams, whatever you want to talk about, whatever you need help with. Anyway, you all have a great day, and I'll talk to you again later. Thank you.